Welcome to the Center for the Arts. Please take a moment to, no, don't worry about your cell phones. It, it's quite all right. You can have them on. You can take pictures. You can, you can tweet. You can text message your friends who wish they were here uh, and wish that they were subscribing to this beautiful new season before everybody else. What a, what a great night. And to you folks over here, I just want to say, you know, behave yourselves. Okay. Um, good evening. It's so lovely to almost see everybody. Uh, and as a thank you for being with us on this auspicious occasion, auspicious for a number of reasons, obviously, because we're back, uh, which is fantastic, and we are so thrilled. <sighs> this, um, I also want to welcome, I know that we have some members of the press here tonight, as well as members of our uh, wonderful friends and, uh, and patrons of the Center for the Arts. Uh, I want to say just a word or two before we get to the main event, which is introducing uh, the season to you all. First, I want to say we're, we're teasing you a little bit with uh, a music stand over here. There will be a live performance later in the program, which is something to very much look forward to. And it's not me, so you're in good hands uh, with the artists who are here tonight. Uh, just, a, just a word or two with my sort of Dean hat on, I guess. Actually, I didn't bring my Dean hat, but, but you, you know what it looks like. It's yellow. It says Mason across the front. This place this center, this concert hall, which opened in 1990, coincided with the creation of the Institute of the Arts at George Mason University, also in 1990. And those two things together constitute what I often call the Big Bang for the Arts at Mason. And they were the product of the vision of George and Joanne jo Johnson, the president and the first lady of George Mason uh, from 1978 to 1995. George saw something in his experience of George Mason and of Northern Virginia, he saw that Northern Virginia and George Mason needed a focal point, needed a place to gather, needed a front door. And he got the idea of creating the Center for the Arts. And that was a, a really the, the thought of George and Joanne together who made that happen with, with support from the community and with vision that persists to this day. George said very famously, and I know a lot of you have heard this before, he said, the arts are my football team. And that rings true today as well. I have heard firsthand report that President Gregory Washington has been heard to say almost the same thing. So this is really great because here we are. Uh, are we the offensive line? I don't, I don't know. What, but anyway, we are, we are the folks who are welcoming the community to George Mason and the Institute of the Arts, which was the academic program, which became the College of Visual and Performing Arts in 2001, has become, we started with about 200 students in, across all the disciplines. Now we are 1,700 majors strong. We teach 10,000 students per semester throughout our college. This has become a major center for all of the arts. And it is because of that original vision and because of your steadfast support. Um, I just want to say, on that historical note, thank you to all of you who have been with us for a long time, maybe even since the beginning. Thank you to all the new friends that we make every year. Uh, this is incredibly exciting. And thank you to our generous sponsors for the 2022-2023 season. And you'll see their names up here on the screen. Sandy Spring Bank, The Mather, Mantech, Mid-Atlantic Arts Foundation, The Seeley Foundation, and the Tom and Evelyn Kiley Fund. This is a group of steadfast supporters who really make it possible, as do all of you, friends of the Center for the Arts. And speaking of friends, one of our friendliest is with us tonight on stage. It's my great pleasure to introduce Paulette Miller. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ooh, he's taller than me. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, and thank you all for joining us this evening for a preview of the 2022-2023 season at the Center for the Arts at George Mason University. This wonderful evening is one of the best benefits that you all have for being a member of the Friends of the Center for the Arts. It is an exclusive first look at the new season and a chance to guarantee you the very best seats. As you know, the great performances at Mason season provides the opportunity to experience nationally and internationally renowned artists and ensembles 
from across the globe and across the performing arts genres as diverse as classical music, contemporary dance, opera, jazz, blues, folk, ballet, bluegrass, classic and contemporary theater, global dance, music, and more. All which our incredible director of programming, Adrian Bryant Goodwin, Godwin, has put together for us. Tonight, you'll also get a first look at the next season of the Family Series, which brings us several performances each year designed for the children in your life. That's something I was waiting for for a long time, and I'm delighted that it brings younger audiences to the Center for the Arts. Adrian, as I said, is our incredible director of programming, and she's put together this season, as she does every year, over the past two years, this has been a daunting and often frustrating task as performers have been forced to cancel tours and our venues have had to make, di make difficult decisions. And through it all, the arts and our access to them have changed and adjusted, but never stopped. So I propose that we take this opportunity to thank, by your applause, Adrienne and her amazing staff and colleagues for that miracle. So would you join me? It is also thanks to you, the friends, that the Center for the Arts can continue to enrich our lives with these series. We have truly appreciated your loyalty to the friends during a pretty rocky time when it may have seemed to you that you weren't getting much in return. But I can assure you, that your loyalty was vital to us all, to us all being here together this evening. So again, my heartfelt thanks. I would like to recognize a group of people dedicated and hardworking um, who I hope um, are here this evening. I'm sure they're here this evening. Those are the members of the board of the Friends of the Center for the Arts. So would those board members who are here, please stand up and wave so we can all acknowledge you. Through all the two years of closures and cancellations, they never gave up either. So thank you all. Um, I want to encourage all of you friends to volunteer in the 2022-2023 season. Mike and Liz Linda will be reaching out to you very soon with opportunities for you to volunteer at the great performances. So when you get an email, make sure you open it up. They will ask, be asking, offering the opportunity to volunteer at the Friends Information Table and as greeters in the Friends Refreshment Area. Please consider this great opportunity. Not only will you meet fellow arts lovers, but volunteers receive free tickets to the performances at which they volunteer. So, win-win. A second volunteer opportunity is as part of events planning. One of your very special benefits of being a member at the contributor and above level is being invited to artist and conversation events. Ida Portland and I, who are co-vice presidents for events, are very excited to be back in business, planning four to five special free evenings that are designed to enrich and enhance your experience of selected performances. And we welcome any one of you who loves to plan a party. So please see me or Ida or watch for emails from us inviting you to help out on uh, the uh, special events as they become, as we start to plan them. Um, I'd also invite, like to invite you to join the Grand Tier Society. These are the donors at the very highest level of giving, levels of giving, who play a leadership role in ensuring excellent excellence in artistic programming for the community. We really do depend on those donors um, to provide some of the stability in our planning and our uh, fundraising. There are also very special events planned just for those members. So check your membership uh, information and think about becoming a member of that wonderful group of people would also like to encourage all of you to consider increasing your membership to the next level or to at least increase your donation by $50. 
is I always try to remember our friend, remind our friends, the price of your ticket does not cover the cost of the performance. The center depends on sponsorships and contributions, big and small, to help carry out its work. Just a note on membership. Your membership is for one year from the month you join or renew until that month the following year. You will receive an email a month before your membership expires reminding you to renew. For those of you who've been around for a while, I think you'll agree this is a welcome improvement. Thanks to hard work by board members and CVPA staff who helped make this happen. And finally, a pitch for one of the most exciting events in the whole year at George Mason, and that is Arts by George. Please put your, um, take out your calendars and put September 24th, 2022 on your calendar for finally Arts by George, live and in person, the new and improved version. Um, you're going to see wonderful things happening, a little bit different from um, Arts by George in the past, but ever, ever so much um, as good as anything we've ever done before. Um, and please also remember that your contribution to Arts by George, part of that will go to um, the great performances. So if you would like to designate your contribution to go to great performances, you can do that. So those are all the things I wanted to remember to tell you, which is why I wrote it all down so I wouldn't forget any of it. But now it is my great pleasure to um, welcome to the stage Director of Programming, Adrian Bryant Godwin. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I'm going to move this up. Paulette and I are a little bit different heights. Um, thank you so much, Paulette, for that. Uh, those wonderful words. Hello, everyone. We're here. We're in person. It's so glorious. It's really, really wonderful to be able to have this event again. Um, it has been really special to start seeing all of you more and more here at the center this year. Um, I can tell you that on behalf of the entire staff here, we are ready to bring you uh, a full season of performances as we did in the past. And I know that especially after the last two years, you're looking for artistic experiences that are inspiring and uplifting, performances that you'll remember and reflect on for years to come. And I think that our 2022-2023 season will deliver. So without further ado, here is a sneak preview. <laughs>
So one of our signature programs here has become our Artists in Residence program. And since we founded this program in 2019, our patrons have been able to get closer to our visiting artists than ever before. We've had community members participate in the creative process with MacArthur award-winning choreographer Bill T. Jones. We've brought uh, we've led Latin music classes for hundreds of local elementary students. We've brought seniors to learn about percussive music and underrepresented composers of color. And most recently, uh, we've brought together hundreds of people uh, to swing dance, both in DC and also here on this stage. Were any of you at that performance? Yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, so each of these residents, the, through each of these residencies, we'll be creating opportunities for Northern Virginia to get to know these incredible artists. And in addition, this program supports these artists with uh, ambitious creative visions as they conduct their own creative research and work on new projects. So as we look ahead to next season, our three Mason artists and residents are all deeply rooted in cultural traditions, but each of them brilliantly present their work through a unique cultural uh, contemporary lens. One of the premier Indian classical dance ensembles, Nritigram Dance Ensemble, will collaborate with Sri Lanka's Chitrasena Dance Company, weaving together two dance vocabularies, Odissi from India and Kandyan from Sri Lanka. In addition, I'm particularly excited to announce that the Silk Road Ensemble, the world-renowned Silk Road Ensemble, will be participating in an exciting three-year residency with us, where we'll be supporting some of their ambitious projects under the new artistic direction of folk phenomenon Rhiannon Giddens. Our third artist in residence, Indigenous Enterprise, they just burst onto the scene a few years ago. Um, and they honor Native American identity through high profile performances on mainstream television and through collaborations with superstars like the Black Eyed Peas. So I'm gonna invite you to learn a little bit more now about Indigenous Enterprise. My name is Adrienne Bryant Godwin, and I'm the Director of Programming for the Center for the Arts. We are so excited to welcome Indigenous Enterprise to the Center for the Arts with their program, Indigenous Liberation. Indigenous Enterprise is a Native American dance company made up of champion dancers from both Canada and the United States. The performers represent a variety of tribes, and most were introduced to these traditions while attending powwows, where many Native tribes gather together. Audiences attending this performance will get to see a wide variety of traditional dances, such as the fancy dance, the jingle dance, and the prairie chicken dance. And what I love about the program is that along with the performance of each of these dances, there are videos and narration which provide historical context for what you're witnessing. This is such an exciting company and they've only been together since 2015, but they're already making quite a name for themselves across the globe. They've performed at the Sydney Opera House. They've collaborated and performed with the Black Eyed Peas. They were the first Indigenous people to perform on NBC's World of Dance, and they recently participated in President Biden's inauguration. Hello, everybody. My name is Kenneth Shirley. I'm the CEO of Indigenous Enterprise, and we're very happy to be able to showcase Indigenous culture with your university in 2023. I've been doing this since I was so little, so it's just very, very nice to be able to, to be able to share that culture with all of the world and, you know, and uh, to break barriers too, a lot of times that we would go to these countries and we'd be the first Native American that a lot of these audience members have ever seen in their life. So that's always, it feels very good to us to be able to kind of let people know that Indigenous people are still here and we're thriving. In addition to creating opportunities for the performance of these important Native dances, the company also prioritizes educating communities about Native people, their history, and their traditions. 
As a Mason Artisan Residence, they will spend a week with us in Northern Virginia, connecting with various members of our community, school-aged children, retired community, students, and I hope that we can work to replace misconceptions about Native American culture by using the tools of art and education to cultivate freedom and empowerment. I'll also add that you might have seen Indigenous Enterprise on the red carpet at the Met Gala last week. So, you know, you've made it when you get to the Met Gala. So good for them. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about our family series. And here at the center, uh, we hope to welcome audiences, whether you're eight or 80. And over the past few years, uh, our family series has, has really become a great way to expand the audiences that we serve here. And I've truly loved seeing many of you here with your extended families. Next year's family series performances will give you the chance to experience live jazz alongside your favorite cartoons, to laugh out loud with world-class comedians and jugglers, and to see the beloved children's classic Harold and the Purple Crayon come to life on stage. Take a look. <laughs> It is time for the special treat of the evening. Uh, Rick mentioned our music stands and mic over there. They're going to be put to use. And uh, I'd like to welcome to the stage an artist that many of you have seen play if you've attended performances of the American Festival Pops Orchestra over the years. Violinist, conductor, arranger, and composer Peter Wilson served as the concert master for AFPO for 12 years. And we have recently announced that uh, AFPO's founding music director, Tony Maiello, will be passing the baton to Peter next season. Peter brings with him an incredible wealth of talent and expertise. He currently serves as music director of the Richmond Philharmonic and the Waynesboro Symphony. He is the former senior enlisted music advisor to the White House, where he led countless ensembles and performed for three decades as a violinist in the president's own United States Marine Band in direct support of five U.S. presidents, which is pretty impressive. Peter has conducted the National Symphony and National Gallery of Art Orchestras and holds degrees from Northwestern University and Catholic University, where he earned a Doctor of Musical Arts. And he and I have already had some really great conversations uh, about the future of the orchestra, and I know you're going to be excited by his energy and talent and charisma so we wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to Peter and to let him speak a little bit about the future that he sees for American Festival Pops Orchestra. Peter will be joined on stage by Kevin Thompson on double bass, who has performed numerous times with AFPO, and we are so happy to welcome him back to the concert hall.
We're also excited to announce that Kevin recently won a position with the president's own as its newest bassist. And we're proud to also note that his mother, Kathy Thompson, happens to be AFPO's principal cello. So it's all in the family. Now, please help me welcome Peter Wilson and Kevin Thompson to the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adrian. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? I can, I can see you smiling behind the masks. No worries. It's so great to be here. I'm so thrilled that Adrian invited me to come to be able to make a, just take the opportunity to speak to you a little bit. Uh, I wanted to have the opportunity, frankly, to talk about Tony a little bit because he's just such an important part of my life and I know a part of your lives and I know you've been seeing him conducting this orchestra for the last 12 years. I have to tell you it's a little bittersweet for me because I've so enjoyed playing under him and being the concertmaster of AFPO. Uh, I'm obviously I'm incredibly honored to get to carry on his legacy, but I will really, really miss playing for him. So this Saturday, of course, we're playing out at the Hilton Center. It'll be my last time sitting in that chair as concertmaster, and then he's gonna have me come up and conduct a few pieces uh, as we say a great farewell. How many of you are planning to go to that concert on Saturday? Outstanding, we'll see you there. If you don't recognize me, it's probably because I don't have my Santa hat on. If you remember, I'm the guy that wears the Santa hat for these uh, the Christmas concerts. So. Well, you know, as far as uh, a vision for the orchestra, I have to tell you that, that what comes to mind to me is just the magic of this orchestra. And I have to thank Tony. I have to credit Tony entirely for that because Tony created this orchestra from the ground up. And the way that he did it was that he didn't just look for the best talent. I mean, he knew where to find all the talent in the DC area. He's been so embedded in, in all of the military bands. He knows where all the great musicians lie. But he's always looking for the best attitude, the people with the biggest heart. And that's what he put together. And he, in this orchestra, he's put together such an enormous family. That's how it feels to me. And so it's just such an honor to be a part of this legacy that Tony built. And with, with you know, one of the, 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 the great thrills for me in playing in this orchestra that is unique among Pops orchestras, I can tell you from having worked at Disney World in the orchestra down there and lots of other Pops orchestras and doing a lot of recording with Pops orchestras, the thing that sets this orchestra apart is that we have an embedded big band. And a lot of these guys come from, you know, the Air Force Airmen of Note, and if you've ever been to these concerts, you'll see us do those, you know, Duke Ellington nutcracker pieces and things like that. Most orchestras can't pull that kind of thing off because they don't have a big band in it. They, they just play, you know, pops orchestra music, but we can do it all. And one of the things that I hope to really highlight is that element. I wanna, I wanna really highlight the big band elements, but I also wanna highlight the strings. And one of the things that I discovered in the Marine Band uh, over the years are these amazing Sammy Nestico arrangements that Sammy Nestico, the great uh, arranger for the Marine Band back in the 60s during the Johnson years, uh, he went on to be an arranger for Count Basie and Frank Sinatra and, uh, and countless television shows. And we, we lost Sammy in, in, at, I think, the age of 92 last year. But he left these gems for string orchestra. You probably heard one of them that we did this past year. Uh, it was... Uh, the, uh, the, the, the Christmas song that we did. And uh, he, just, he just left such a legacy of fantastic string pops music. So I'm hoping to highlight all of these different facets of the orchestra. And the last thing I'll say is, uh, before we're gonna play a couple of tunes here uh, for you, but um, you know, one of the things that, that Tony just instilled in all of us was just to have fun. We have so much fun on stage, and of course, that's only secondary to the fun that we hope you're having in the audience. So with that, I have a million other dreams for this orchestra. Wow, I now feel a song coming on. A million dreams, hmm, what does that come from? Did anyone see that film, The Greatest Showman? Okay, well, here it is. Thank you. 
Kevin Thompson on the bass over here. Thank you. You know, when Adrian said, you know, we'd love for you to make some remarks, and then could you play a little something? I thought, well, yes, but I wanted to do it with someone, and I thought, how great would it be if I could bring in sort of the, the younger generation, if you will. I'm sort of the old guard, and we've got, we've got, you know, this young whippersnapper over here who's unbelievable on this instrument, by the way. Unbelievable. So, you know, it, and, I, and it just, it, it couldn't be more fitting that, that he is the newest member of the President's Own, and I just retired from there a year and a half ago, and, and uh, I'm just, you're going to have just an amazing career over there, and I'm so happy for you, and I'm so glad that I have a, another friend that's still in the band, you know? This is, this is so great. So, you know, again, I, I, I just want to publicly thank Tony. I know he's not here, but uh, I just feel like, I owe him so much on behalf of the rest of the orchestra for everything that he did to build the American Festival Pops Orchestra. And so I, 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 I take it with, with great humility, the, the, the baton from him this weekend, and we'll, we'll move on. And uh, my first concerts will be in December. Uh, one of them will be here, of course, and one at the Hilton Center. And then beyond that, I'm hoping that we can expand uh, our concert series to be at, at least one other concert, hopefully in you know in April or May, and and then you know maybe even expand beyond that because years ago we used to do about four concerts a year. We had a Valentine's Day concert, we had a fall concert, and it would be nice to get back to that. Of course, this all requires money, and it all requires you know time uh, to, to to get in these beautiful performing arts facilities. And so, with your help, hopefully we can we can expand and we can bring great American Pops music uh, to this community, which has just such, you know, amazing support. And, and you know, I know that we just, we fill these halls when we perform, so it's, it's really great. But obviously, it, you know, we, it doesn't, doesn't happen, you know, for free. I, I appreciate that. So, but it's just such a magical, magical orchestra, and I hope you feel the same, um, and, and such a big family. So we'd like to close out uh, here with um, something that's kind of been, in the news lately, certainly at the Academy Awards with a, a couple of wins here. Uh, we're gonna take it back to some Leonard Bernstein. This is uh, something from West Side Story to close it out. And thank you so much, and I hope to see some of you in the lobby after this. This is America. <laughs>
Talk about a tough act to follow. Wow. Shakespeare has a great line at the end of Love's Labor's Lost he, where he says, has a character say, the words of Mercury are harsh after the songs of Apollo. So here I am, the words of Mercury. Uh, thank you to Peter and, and Kevin, and I hope you'll uh, take Pete up on his, uh, uh, his invitation to go have some dessert with him uh, afterwards and hear more about the, the orchestra. Uh, very, very exciting. Um, so uh, I have a couple of more uh, things to talk to you about tonight before we get to the all-important drawing uh, and the dessert and the uh, purchasing of tickets, which, by the way, I have a very simple shortcut for everybody. There's a uh, take-all box on the brochure. It's the, it's the easiest way to do it. And actually, after seeing this video now several times and hearing Adrian talk about it for all these months as we're going up, there really isn't any reason not to come to anything. That's a double negative, but that means Yes, right? So what a great season that Adrian has put together. Um, but I, I do have the pleasure of, uh, of talking to you about a couple more events because the Center for the Arts, as you know, and as I was alluding to with my Big Bang remark earlier, this is also the home for many wonderful performances by Mason students throughout the year. We have student productions on this stage next year uh, from the School of Theater, the School of Music, uh, and the School of Dance. And I want to say a, a word or two about about uh, three of these because they are they are in your brochure uh, first of all the in october the school of theater is going to be producing a wonderful sassy saucy musical called head over heels uh it's uh, it's a, the creative team includes uh people that uh, were in um involved with Broadway productions like hedwig and the angry inch avenue q and spring awakening and also uh the Adaptation is by a very dear friend of mine, Jim Magruder, who actually uh, succeeded me in my dramaturgical role at Center Stage in Baltimore all those many years ago, right about when the Big Bang uh, was happening here. It's a great piece, a great creative team, uh, directed by our own Aaron Gardner and uh, musical direction by Joe Walsh. Uh, Head Over Heels features music and lyrics by of the iconic 1980s all-female rock band, The Go-Go's, and here's the kicker, and this is the Jim Magruder piece, and it's based on the book The Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia by Sir Philip Sidney. So Renaissance, literary source, and the Go-Go's put together in this incredible musical called Head Over Heels. You're going you're gonna to love it. Um, in December, the Dewberry School of Music will deck this very hall with the Mason Symphony Orchestra and Chorus Holiday Concert, featuring holiday favorites and festive new works performed by these wonderful student artists under the direction of Dr. Sue Han and Dr. Lisa Billingham. And then in the spring, the School of Dance Annual Gala Concert, which is always a highlight of any season, crowns the Mason Dance Company season, featuring a powerful program of works by contemporary professional choreographers. So once again, I call your attention to this page of the brochure, and we encourage you to come and support our students all year, but especially for these wonderful concerts. And you can actually add them to your subscription package. So that's a really cool thing. Uh, now, I would like to now introduce for the, uh, the fine print of the evening, our wonderful ticket office manager, Betsy Yancey. Betsy. Thank you, Rick. All right, need these now. Uh, after a couple of years of uncertainty and irregular ticketing practices, we've decided to update our subscription offerings. So we are bringing back our most popular fixed series subscriptions, which are the Keyboard Conversations and, with Jeffrey Siegel and the Virginia Opera Matinee and Evening Series. So if you loved and purchased these series previously, you can do so again, and the seats that you select will be the same for each of the performances in those series. You can also purchase the Family Series as a fixed series at an affordable rate of $38 per person, adult or child. Uh, our Choose Your Own subscription has also been updated with, uh, <laughs> with a flat discount rate of 15% off the full price tickets. And the flat rate allows for greater flexibility in selecting your subscription performances. You can now mix and match both the great performances at Mason and the Family Series, and as long as you get a minimum of three performances. And this discount also applies to any eligible performances in your subscription later in the season. You get several benefits when you subscribe. You get free ticket exchanges, 
and we include information regarding that first exchange uh, in your subscription packet with an envelope to help facilitate that. And the other advantages um, are priority seating, of course, discounts off of additional tickets, and invitation to friends events. As explained in the brochure, we fill subscription based on when we receive the order forms. The friends receive the highest priority with an exclusive two-week period where we will process subscriptions only made by friends of the Center for the Arts. This period extends from May 10th tonight through the 23rd. After the 23rd, we will still give friends priority, but we will also be filling uh, new and renewing subscriptions as well. If you're interested in the payment plan, the deadline for enrolling in that is June 17th. And as a reminder to those wishing to enroll, donations to the Center for the Arts, your friends membership, and Arts by George benefit tickets will not be included in the payment plan total and will be charged with your first payment. The payment dates uh, for the plan are June 17th, July 17th, and August 17th. More information can be found in your brochure. Be, uh, please be specific, but not too narrow regarding your seating preferences. If you have certain needs, however, like wheelchair access, then please make sure to note that on your order form. The staff um, in the ticket office does its utmost to make sure that you have your desired seating preferences and that you're happy with your subscription. We are, um, if we are unable to seat you in your location, in your, your requested location, we will call you to inform you of that and try to work out an alternative. The earlier that you hand in your form or subscribe online, the more likely you are to receive your desired seating preferences. Subscriptions can be purchased in person at the ticket office, over the phone, or online. And please note that our summer hours of Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. begin next week on May 16th. If you need assistance in purchasing subscriptions online, please contact the ticket office during business hours. As an incentive to get your order form in early uh, tonight, um, any order forms, green order forms turned into the ticket office tonight will be entered into our half price drawing for um, a half price subscription. And winners will be notified of their good fortune tomorrow. If you're renewing your subscription tonight, there are a couple of ways to do so. You can hand off the green order form with your payment at the table in front of the ticket office where I will be located with a seller or two. Uh, or if you'd like to choose your seats, then you can do so at our ticket office windows. And please note that the green order form does not provide a place for you to put um, payment information or make your totals. And this is to make it easier on you all, and we will do that for you. We will add all of that up for you. Um, also, please don't take these forms home with you because, again, they don't include a place to put your payment information, and uh, you might miss the priority period if you, um, you know, mail it back. So the form is for tonight only, and we uh, have eliminated the order form from the brochure to encourage uh, more efficient ordering online, over the phone, and in person in order to comply with the university's desire to reduce mail-in payments. So subscription packets will be mailed out in late August this year to uh, accommodate our later announcement and our shortened subscription season. Uh, so individual tickets will go on sale August 1st, and if you're interested in purchasing a group of 10 or more tickets to a particular performance, group sales begin on July 5th. If you have any questions, you can see me later in the lobby, or feel free to call the ticket office or email me at cfatix at gmu.edu. Um, that was terrific, and, and I'll see you out there, but just once again, thank you so much for being here. Enjoy this wonderful season, and enjoy dessert. See you soon. <laughs>